Let's go to South Africa to hear another important uh, black voice. We're joined briefly this morning by Archbishop Desmond Tutu, the Anglican Archbishop of South Africa. Uh, Archbishop Tutu, thank you for taking a few minutes. Is Mr. Mandela now the universally recognized leader of the black nationalist movement in your country? I have to say, I mean, he's just been behaving uh, wonderfully well and we have kept saying that he is head and shoulders above any other leader black or white in south africa he has never claimed to be uh, the universal leader of all blacks uh, you heard in his speech that uh, their commitment is to a multi-party democracy which does mean that there would be place for any other people who have constituencies that seek to uh, choose them to represent them. I stand here as an old man and I want to remind you that we got to be at this point because we were disciplined. So, I am not going to give you a blessing until all of you stand. Paramani! And... Niki Waka! I, I want to hear a pin drop. Hey, hey, Nina. Hey, Bobby. Hey. Nina, yes, open. Now I want to so the world which has come out here to celebrate the life of an extraordinary icon. We want to say thank you to that world, but you must show that world that we are disciplined. And so I want to hear a pin drop. Hey. 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 Ah. Our policy is one which is called by an Afrikaans word, apartheid. And I'm afraid that has been misunderstood so often. It could just as easily, and perhaps much better be described, as a policy of good neighborliness. Accepting that there are differences between people. But while these differences exist, and you have to acknowledge them, at the same time, you can live together, aid one another, but that it can best be done when you act as good neighbors always do. Even if this means making one group second-class citizens? No, I don't think that in the far future it means <laughs> making second-class citizens. Goobers would have uh, enjoyed that. I mean, sure. What are your thoughts today about... Favut. Favut. He was a very, very clever man. He thought, I mean, that um, you could deal with things here by being, by being smart. Uh, but it was clear that uh, black people in South Africa had no position higher than certain forms of labor. He said so. He said quite, quite clearly in Parliament, he said, why we must introduce Bantu education. President Mugabe was one of the leading lights 
in our firmament. He was one of the best heads of state. When he became president, instead of calling for retribution and revenge, he amazed everybody by pushing reconciliation, reconstruction. And it's unbelievable that he he should have become what he has become, uh, where you clearly see that he, uh, I've said sometimes that he's almost a caricature of the kind of a ruler the world thinks African leaders tend to be. And it's a great sadness, uh, great sadness, I mean, to see uh, the uh, subverting of the rule of law, uh, seeking to cling to power at all costs. Uh, is horrible, horrible, horrible. And uh, we have to, in a way, hang our heads in shame. Our government representing me, representing me, says it will not support Tibetans who are being oppressed viciously by the Chinese. I am warning you, I am warning you that we will pray as we prayed for the downfall of the apartheid government, we will pray for the downfall of a government that misrepresents us. I would have said to you, let us have a public meeting. And at that public meeting, for you to stand up and say, there are things that went wrong. There are things that went wrong. And I, I don't know why they went wrong. And she, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for my part in what went wrong. I was seething with rage. To this day, I ask God to forgive me for not forgiving him. He was acting there for the public, acting there for Stratcom begging me to say I was sorry. I beg you. I beg you. Yeah, I wasn't going to say sorry as if I had been responsible for apartheid. I mean, how dare, really? You are a great person. And you don't know how your greatness would be enhanced if you were to say sorry. Things went wrong. Forgive me. I beg you. The one person who kept the fires burning when everybody was petrified and I didn't blame them because of those dark forces of apartheid were killing our people like flies. I didn't blame them when sometimes I would shoot that fist alone and they were too petrified. You put me on trial before the TRC and A. Desmond Tutu sits there judging me, judging me. When things were getting rough, I mean, after, after his release and, and, and the build up to our first democratic election, it was one of the roughest, one of the bloodiest periods in, in, in our history. It did seem as if there was a, a third force uh, that sought to undermine the process of uh, renegotiations. And yes, I, I mean, when you think of the assassination of uh, Chris Honey, it really was touch and go. Oh, my God.